The firm employs workers who work for managers. In turn, managers are hired by a board of directors or senior managers who set the overall strategic goals for the firm. If the strategy works well, everyone gets paid well in return. In doing so, there are conflicts arising between the various levels in the firm. We'll discuss them in much more detail during the live lectures, but before before we do that, it's good it's good to know the following. Is the wage everything that the worker cares about? Is the wage everything that the worker cares to maximize and the firm cares to minimize? We'll find out in this video. Now, if the firm were trying to minimize the wage bill, they're paying to the workers. Now, they, they would be paying subsistence levels, right? They would be paying just about enough to cover the welfare benefits. Paying subsistence levels of wages is, 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 is certainly an option, but, but then why would anyone want to work if they can get a welfare benefit in return? So, no, it is very unlikely that, f that firms will resort to paying wages equal to welfare benefits. A more realistic option is that the firm will try to incentivize the worker to stay at the firm to incentivize the worker to not only stay, but also to exert uh, higher effort. Now, the firm can do that by giving a bit on top of what the worker will get as an outside option. As the outside option is, is the welfare benefit, the firm will try to keep the worker by paying them slightly more than the welfare benefit. Thus, the firm gets to keep the worker and the worker is no longer indifferent between working and getting welfare benefits. The worker wants to be employed. We labeled that difference between the wage and the fallback option with the term employment rent. In a conceptual sense, it is very similar to a profit for the worker from going to work. So let's think like economists here. Why would the firm pay more than necessary to keep the worker? There are two main reasons for that. First, if workers are no longer indifferent between working and being unemployed, they actually want to stay on the job in the firm. No firm benefits from constant turnover of staff New staff is costly to hire and train, and uh, stable employment relationships within the team may make the team more productive. So constant changes in members of the team means that the team productivity may start decreasing. And as a result, the firm benefits from keeping the workers on the job, especially the key ones. But importantly, once the firm creates the employment rent, workers have something to lose from being laid off. Once this happens, workers start living with a threat of being laid off. This last fact is a great motivator for giving their best for the firm. Now, as the employment rent turns out to be a great motivator for working harder, we'll study its impact further during the live lectures and seminars. But we'll not only talk about its impact, we'll discuss what it takes for it to change as well. Three factors are immediately responsible for a change in the employment rent. The state of the economy and the policies related to the unemployment uh, benefits, in particular their size and duration. Now in the next couple of videos we'll see ways to model the intuition that we have just developed about workers' motivation to work harder and the employment rents that firms create for them. The model will be called the Labor Discipline Model. Keep watching.